Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video we're going to be dealing once again with group frequency distributions. Uh, but this time, uh, how to calculate lower bound and upper bound outliers. Okay, So we'd like to be able to calculate some lower bound, some lower bound, and also some upper bound outliers. Actually, more importantly, what we'd like to be able to find is uh, the demarcation point with respect to our distribution. That any values that are less than this demarcation point are classified as unusually low values. And uh, our, an upper bound demarcation point, that any values greater than this, the upper bound are classed as upper bound outliers. And we have a formula for both of these. Uh, and the formula says that lower bound outliers, uh, let's call them LBOs for lower bound outliers, are any values that are less than the first quartile, okay, the first quartile, okay, minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, okay. So we need to know where the first quartile is, we also need to know the interquartile range, and then we take the first quartile value and we take away 1.5 times the interquartile range. That gives us our demarcation point for lower bound outliers. And any value less than this particular value is classified as an unusually low value. Okay? With respect to upper bound outliers, upper bound outliers, what we do is we look at the third quartile, okay, the third Q, and we add on 1.5 times the interquartile range, the IQR. Actually, make, let's make this an I that looks like that, okay, the interquartile range. So once we have the third quartile, and the first quartile, we can calculate the interquartile range, the difference between the third and the first quartile. Uh, we either take away 1.5 times the interquartile range with respect to the first quartile to give us our lower bound outlier position, or we add on 1.5 times the interquartile range to the third quartile to give us our upper bound outlier position. So no matter what we do, we have to calculate these quartiles, okay? And now to calculate the quartiles, there's a formula for calculating the quartiles. Uh, the formula looks something like this. So for the first quartile, let's say our first quartile, our formula, and there's a previous video that actually deals with this, okay? So for the first quartile, the formula looks like this. Let's call it Q1. Q1 is equal to L of Q1, the lower bound of the first quartile class, uh, plus uh, sigma F over 4, sigma F over 4, minus capital F of whatever the quartile class is, minus 1, the one before it, divided by small f of Q1, the actual frequency of the quartile class, times the width of the quartile class. Uh, so let's call that C of Q1, the width of the quartile class, okay? So, how do we calculate the first quartile? Well, what it says that we should do, first of all, and there's a number of steps uh, associated with this. Let me just get my calculator here. Uh, but I mean, with our formula, there's a key, and I'm looking for my red pen, okay? There's a key. This value here is our key to calculating this particular, this particular, this particular uh, quartile, okay? Actually, if you think about it, the first quartile must be, well, sigma f represents the total number of observations that we have. So we have 50 observations. So the first quartile or the first quarter must be a fourth of those 50 observations along with respect to the ordering uh, of the observations. So actually, to calculate the quartile class where the quartile will reside, we need to calculate sigma f over 4. Okay, uh, but first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to create a cumulative distribution. Okay, we'll just a capital, a capital F column, a cumulative distribution. Okay, which is how many values are less than our upper bounds. Okay, so there's five values less than 45. So there's five here. How many are less than 50? There's 10 in this interval, and there's the five previous. This is 15. How many are less than, than 65? Well, there's the 15, the 10, and the 5. So that gives us a total of 30. And then we have 45, we have 49, and we have all of the observations are less than 110. Okay, so sigma f over 4 for the first quartile, sigma f over 4 uh, is equal to 50 divided by 4. Okay, let's just do that in our calculator here. So 50 divided by 4, 50 divided by 4 gives us a value of 12.5. Okay, so that's equal to 12.5. So the first quartile must be at least 12 observations along with respect to the ordering of the observations. Okay, so it's actually between the 12th and the 13th observation, if that makes sense. Okay, that's where the first quartile will reside. So what we actually do now is we take this particular key, this value, and we walk down the cumulative column until we find the first, the first cumulative frequency that exceeds that exceeds 
our key that exceeds the key okay in this case the first cumulative frequency that exceeds 12.5 so if you think about it, as I said, a quarter of the observations represents 12.5 observations. So the quartile has to be, be, be between the 12th and the 13th observation. Yeah. Okay. So actually what we can see from the cumulative frequencies is that 5 observations are less than 35, 15 are less than 50. So actually the 13th, the 12th and 13th observation actually resides in this class. And that's why I'm saying exceeds the key. So we take our key sigma f over 4, which is associated with our first quartile formula. Okay, which is 12.5. We walk down the cumulative frequencies until we find the first one that exceeds 12.5. And the first one that exceeds it is this 15 here. Okay. Now what this does for us, and if I get my red pen, okay, is this identifies the first quartile class. So there's the first quartile class. Okay. And now we have all of our values relative to this class. Okay. So L of Q1 is the lower bound of the quartile class. So we have L of Q1 is going to be equal to 35, okay? So I have that. C of Q1 is the width of the quartile class, so C of Q1 is going to be equal to 15. That's the width of that class. Small f of Q1 is the actual frequency of the quartile class. So here's the quartile class. Its actual frequency is 10, okay? And capital F of Q1, well, capital F of Q1 would be the cumulative frequency of the quartile class. The cumulative frequency of the quartile class is 15. But we want capital F of Q1 minus 1. Now this is just an index, which is the quarter is, is the cumulative frequency of the class before the quartile class, which gives us 5. Okay? 